Good morning, guys. It's Rose with another Realm Guide. Get yourself a cup of tea with honey, because today we're talking about the nest. We'll go over how to find it, how to beat it, and what loot it drops. Use the timestamps in the description to skip to the parts you need most. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like the video to help me grow the channel, and comment with what other guides and videos you want to see next. With that out of the way, let's get started with where the nest dungeon comes from. The nest spawns in three distinct ways. The natural way for it to spawn is when the world boss known as the Killer Bee Nest is defeated in one of the realms. When it is defeated, a portal to the nest drops and anyone can enter. The three guardian bees that guard the Killer Bee Nest are fairly dangerous, but they can drop behemoth armor, sword runes, and behemoth quivers, along with stat pots and tier 10 plus weapons and armor. The second way for the nest to spawn is when the event boss known as the Keeper is defeated. Upon defeat, he drops eight portals, and sometimes the nest is one of them. And the final way to open a portal to the nest is using a key. These can be purchased from the shop or dropped early from enemies, and they can be used anywhere and any time to open a portal for anyone to go through. With how to get into the nest covered, let's go over how you can clear to the boss and what enemies you need to watch out for along the way. Once you've entered the nest, clearing is similar to most other dungeons in that you take it one room at a time. Once you peek an enemy, however, and especially big bees, make sure you kill that enemy as they can chase you all through the dungeon and getting a big bee in the boss room can wipe a group, so you don't want to peek rooms that you don't need to go through. Rushers aren't going to be as useful as normal because in the nest you can't teleport to other players, so rushers would either have to solo the boss, which would result in nobody else getting loot. Um, enemies of note while clearing are going to be limited to the large red, blue, and yellow bees, the bee nests, and the maggots or, and or larvae. The large colored bees are scary because when they are brought to low HP, I think it's like 30%, they back up, heal a bit, and enrage before rushing towards the group with high damaging shotguns. Each bee has slightly different threats, but the main thing is try to slow them before they enrage, and then kite backwards and burst them during the enrage. The most important shots to avoid from these bees are going to be the skittle circular shaped ones and the star shaped ones as those inflict the worst status effects. The b mini bee nests aren't super dangerous, um, but they do spawn more bees and they have a small chance of dropping an ST item, so it's worth to try and get those drops if you can. And lastly, the maggots and larvae don't seem that scary, but these guys are spooky specifically because they're quick they fire Nova shots, and they hit Pet Stasis, Paralyze, and Armor Break. Which means if you get hit by a Paralyze, you have to Nexus, or you will die in a flash. And I say this because all too many times, I have seen 8-8s, people who have put hours and hours on a character, break an egg in the nest, only to hiccup, get hit by that Paralyze, and die to literally the weakest enemy in the entire nest. It's so tragic. <laughs> Anyways, with notable enemies and clearing covered, let's talk about how to beat the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee fight takes place over eight phases. Uh, crazy, right? Anyways, in phase one, she'll circle the room throwing blue quiet bombs and white daze bombs. Um, these aren't going to be lethal, but dodge these to max out your DPS. Yeah, nothing lethal really happens in this phase except for some little shotguns that are stack stingers. Dodge those. They still shouldn't kill you, but obviously don't get hit by them. At 90% HP, she goes to phase 2, at which point the bridge leading to the room uh, will fill with lava or honey, whichever you want to call it. Um, the boss room itself will also shrink a little bit as the outer edges fill with the honey lava as well. In this phase 2, the queen will flash a certain color, revealing her next attack pattern. The main things to avoid here are going to be the red bombs that inflict confuse, or the blue bombs that quiet. Phase 3 starts at 75% HP, at which point the queen will go to the center of the room. If you can hit her with stun while she's flashing white at the beginning, you can avoid shots for the first couple seconds of this phase. This phase will start with an unavoidable barrage of red glaives that armor break, unless you stun her. And then after this, she does a messy barrage of shots, which can be avoided by sidestepping in the order of up, down, left, and then right. Once the queen goes down to 60%, she goes to the ninja star phase, or phase 4. Um, during phase 4, you'll need to continue moving to avoid the ninja stars. People argue between whether it's 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Um, and the most important ones to dodge during this phase are the yellow shots, as they paralyze you and guarantee that you'll take shots on the next wave. This phase shouldn't be lethal unless you run through multiple shots from one wave, which you can do on the blue and red shots. So watch out for that. 
At 45% HP, the queen goes to phase 5, during which she'll choose a color again. For red and yellow, she'll sit near the center of the room, shooting shots outward. Um, the main things to watch out for are the red tentacles or shotguns. Um, those hurt a lot. Uh, during blue phase, you want to kite her around the room. That's pretty much it. And for yellow, just do your best to avoid the shots. The little bees will daze you, and the yellow balls will slow. At 25% HP, she goes to phase 6, which is probably one of the more dangerous phases, especially if you've not done it before. Look at your mini-map and move to the top left or the bottom right section of the room. Or, yes, looking at your mini-map again. Follow the group if you can't do this quickly enough. It's okay. The queen will start firing stingers horizontally that broaden into large cones. If you walk into this cone, it will almost always instant kill you. So do not walk into this cone no matter what. During this phase, the queen is also invulnerable, and your primary focus will be shooting the three nests that are around the room. They're firing radial shots, um, and if you have to choose between taking a couple of these radial shots and the cone the queen is shooting, take those radial shots every single time. As again, that cone will pretty much instant kill you. <laughs> because the cone shots do as much or more damage than the radial shots, and they're at a higher frequency, and if you cross any distance, there's a lot more of them as well. Like, yeah, it's just, don't go in the cone, no matter what. If you have to nexus, do that, okay? Um, after two of those three nests are broken, or after a significant period of time passes, the phase will end, and three large bees will spawn from the remaining nest, or remaining nests, and go to the queen, starting phase seven. Depending on which nest was left alive, um, that will change the color of these the three bees that are spawned. If they're red, the bees inflict curse and armor break. If they're blue, the bees inflict quiet, weak, and pet stasis. And if they're yellow, they inflict paralyze and daze. Obviously, those all have their different uh, problems, but the scariest of those to me is the paralyze from the yellow bees, because that can get you hit by the queen shots, which are scarier because they're shotguns, right? In phase 7, the queen also chooses a color, which influences her last attack pattern. For red queen, watch out for the fast moving shots as they hurt the most. For blue queen, just kite her around the room. Um, and for yellow queen, dodge the paralyzed shots if you can, as they make you get hit a lot more. At 12.5% HP, she'll go to phase 8, at which point she and her bees can be stunned, and if stunned, this phase is just DPS down to the chest. Once she dies, before grabbing the loot, Wait for the helpers to self-destruct, they'll flash white and then they'll explode, as you can die to the shots they explode into. And with that said, congratulations on finishing your first nest. Um, if you want more loot, there's also a treasure room you can go to with at least one guaranteed per nest, there can be more. Um, the main threats from this beekeeper, as his name, will be the flames he spits and the floor flames he creates. Um, don't stand on the floor flames or get lined up by the flame tentacles, as I believe they armor pierce, and you will die very, very quickly if you do either of those things. Anyways, now that you know how to beat everything in the nest, let's go over the loot you can get from the nest. First, you can get dexterity pots or life pots by clearing this dungeon on a fairly regular basis. You can also get the exclusive Swarming Huntress set from here, which has decent DPS and looks awesome. From the Queen and the Beekeeper, you can get Tier 14 Armors, some nice UTs, or Sword Runes. And lastly, you can get the Killer Queen Pet Skin from the Queen herself, although it is a very, very low drop rate. Happy hunting. Now, let's cover Exaltations. If you've already maxed out your stats, the Nest is one of the eight Exaltation Dungeons, specifically that for Dexterity. Which means that after enough completions on a class, that class will have permanently higher dexterity even on brand new characters. The Nest is considered one of the easiest exaltations, it being that or the, lost, the cultists hide out, and as such is usually one of the first completed. If you want help completing exaltations, a good resource is one of the endgame discords. I personally would recommend Pest Control, I've got a link to them in the description, as they help me for through my first few nests. They have great raid leads and really help me a ton. If you prefer to come try my Discord out, we don't do nest runs all the time, but we've got a bunch of people in there who can try and help you out if you're struggling through it. I'll also drop that link in the description below. With all that said, you should be more than ready to take on the nest and bring back home endless life potions and some cool gear. If this video helped you, please help me back by smashing that subscribe button and then the like button too. If there's a video you need that I haven't made yet, comment it below and I'll work on it for you guys. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, 
Keep it beefy, boys. Hello there.